The way that we do assessment reporting is basically students can go out, um, you assign them a topic, and then you come in and you can generate, generate a report. And let me show you a couple reports. First, we'll go to an all topics report. This is basically a bird's eye view of everything that's going on with your with your class. Think of it as a as a grade book. And so here you'll see we have all of our topics uh, along the top here, and then we have all of our student names down the left side, and then we have it color coded. So green obviously is good. That means that, that they've achieved high mastery. And what do we mean by that? High mastery is defined as mastered more than 80 percent of the content. Medium is 60 to 79 percent of content, and low is less than 59 percent of the content. So we tried to correspond this without putting grades in, but we tried to give it some sort of percentage score that would make sense to you. And then, of course, incomplete is no work completed. So it's pretty easy to see that, for example, Ty, he's having some difficulty across some topics, didn't do one here. And uh, Michael, he's having some a uh, little bit lower on the accounting for receivables, and Amanda is uh, got a 50% on accounting for receivables also. But everybody else is looking um, pretty good for the most part. Well, the real power of this is when you get into the actual uh, report by topic. So here, let's look at one for adjusting entries. Because last year, I spent a lot of time talking with instructors about, well, what do you want to know when students use the software, and there were three main things that they told me. One was, how much did students improve from the time that they started using the software? What level of mastery did the class achieve? And then how did students do individually so that I can assign credit and get help for those students that are still struggling? And along with that, we, wanted to, we decided to include some things on the types of errors students are making and then get down to some other details that I'll show you in a second. So here you can see class improvement. If I scroll down, we have this, this uh, chart here. And as you can see, um, the initial accuracy of students coming in was about 80% in their ability to solve transactions. They ended up at about 95%. So they improved 15% overall. Now, if you look at this black line, this is actually kind of the national average. That's anybody that uses our software. That could be struggling students, advanced, uh, community college, four-year, for-profit, not-for-profit. It's the whole universe. And this is just a, a guide. You know, if you just are curious about how your students compare to the universe out there, this is, this is there for you. Uh, what you can do, though, is you can start getting into, OK, well, they improved 15% overall, but where did that improvement take place? Well, here we have, under concepts and skills, we have the accounting equation. And you can see how this is lined up with the, with the topic itself. This is where they had the most improvement. They improved 26%, which makes sense, because that's where a lot of the learning takes place, is understanding what accounts go where within that accounting equation. And then on the accounting journal, you know, they improved 13.5%. That makes sense, because they're dealing with understanding debits and credits. And then, of course, you get to the accounting ledger, which is a pretty simple step for them, because you're basically moving from the posting from the journal to the ledger. Then that's a simpler step. So there's, they're going to be, they're just going to do better out of the gate on that one. Uh, so then, if we go to class mastery, you'll see uh, just overall for my class, I have 92.3 percent achieved high mastery, 7.7 .7 medium. And nobody fell into the low category, which is good. And even on the high, you can see they, they ended up higher than the national average. This is a pretty good group of students that did, did some work within the software. Well, next, if we go to student mastery, this is where it starts to get really interesting. Because now you can start to get some insight into how students are using the software. So here's my student names along the left. And if you only looked at one thing, you can go all the way over here to the right to see mastery achieved. I can quickly see who's got it and who doesn't. For somebody that doesn't have it, you know, my eye goes right here, and I can see Ty. If I click on his name, it launches his How Am I Doing report. And I can see that Ty went through half of the material and then stopped for one reason or another. But he was on a roll. But at least you can see exactly where a student is, is struggling. Now, as you start to look into some of the data that we have here, here's time spent. And you can see there's variation in time. Uh, some students, and just like anything, some students are going to be able to go right through 
you know, the course is going to be easy for them. And so but they still need to demonstrate mastery, that they can do the work. And so here you can see uh, Megan spent uh, 57 minutes and got 100% mastery. And she asked 10 questions along the way, where somebody like Matthew down here, he requested the solution 27% of the time, meaning he wasn't sure how to approach the problem. So he wanted to view the solution several times first, and then uh, he was able to demonstrate, solved with no help, that he was able to do, do the work. Then you have somebody like Terry who asked 45 questions. So they, they found the questions feature helpful in their ability to, to learn the problem. Then, of course, up here you have Debbie who asked 102 questions. I've never seen somebody ask that many. Um, so she must have really enjoyed um, that feature. But the idea here is that you can look at and get a pretty good sense of the effort that your students are making. So if you see somebody here that has uh, a lot of minutes but low mastery, they're probably trying, but they're not having success. And that would be the student that you might want to pull aside. Conversely, if you have somebody that comes to you and says, boy, I'm really having difficulty, and you go in here and you see they spent 10 minutes and they, all they did was click view solution, they probably need to go out there and practice a little bit more. Um, one last point about time spent, too, and this is important because a lot of systems out there will keep track of time, uh, what we call time and seat. So if you go out there for an hour and they spend 45 minutes on Facebook and 15 minutes working, that system says, hey, great job, you spent an hour studying. In our environment, we look at time on task. And so in that same scenario, students spend 15 minutes working, 45 minutes on Facebook, we say, a hey, spend 15 minutes working. We do sort of an elapsed time. We know when the student is using the software and not using the software. And so you can look at this with confidence and know that this is the amount of time that they're actually spending studying. Uh, what you'll also notice is, like, for example, this was a, a class that took financial for the first time. So this is about the average for this topic. If you were to use this, say, for an intermediate course where they're coming in and getting a refresher, uh, you'd see the average time spent get about cut in half. It takes them about under an hour to get a refresher on a topic like this and, and achieve, uh, achieve mastery. So for the struggling student, they get all the scaffolding they need. They get all the feedback that they need. And then for the advanced student, they can get through this quickly. But the interesting part about this is, uh, and this is what we're trying to achieve, is everybody takes a, a different path but everybody ends up in the same destination, which is high mastery. And that's what we're trying to accomplish. The students that really need the help, we give it to them. The ones that don't need the help, we give them what they need to get, to get through it. And that's where that adaptive learning and individualized learning uh, takes place. That's what we mean by that. So let me show you the, um, the errors by type uh, report. And again, this is all generated real time. Here you can see for the accounting equation, uh, let's see, put an account in the wrong category for the accounting equation, which was a mistake that I made. That happened 8.24% of the time. Or uh, under the accounting journal, did not put debits first in the journal entry, which was also a mistake I made. That happened almost 22% uh, of the time. And so you can see here that there's, uh, for experienced instructors, there's probably not going to be a whole lot of surprises about the kinds of errors students are making, but to see it quantified uh, over here is very helpful. The other thing is if you're at a school that has a lot of adjunct or part-time instructors, you can use reports like these to compare one instructor to another. So if you have uh, an instructor that doesn't have this error at all on their report and one that has this as their number one error, that's an opportunity to pair those two instructors together and saying, OK, well, the book's the same, the homework system's the same, the curriculum's the same. Uh, what is it that you're teaching? How are you teaching this differently that you're not getting this error, but I am? So there's a collaboration opportunity um, for, for instructors to work together. Now, if you also wanted to get down to really specific detail, and again, this can save you time um, in the class. Uh, you can get down to even account level. So if I go over here, here's my accounts, and here's the mastery level. If I go to my lowest percentage over here, 84.6, that's adjusting for depreciation. So while the group did pretty well on this, 
if you were to say to um, the class, well, if there's one thing you wanted to review, uh, you, would, you would talk about adjusting for depreciation, or maybe that's one that you'd want to put on the test, since that's where they were um, the weakest. So you can, like, this is available for you as well. And then lastly, we have um, questions. So if you want to see what kind of questions that students have, those are available here and they're categorizing this, so analyzing the event, potential misconceptions, things like that. Now, the nice thing just about the questions idea in general, it's particularly helpful for online classes where I've had a lot of instructors say, oh my gosh, I am blue in the face from answering the same questions over and over and over again. And so here is a way that students can get into uh, the software and be able to get their get their questions answered. And so the nice thing about all of this is, is you can download everything into an Excel report and be able to, to view that, analyze it, sort the information, whatever it is that you want to do. And then we also have the ability of running custom reports. So if the software is being used, say, on multiple campuses and you wanted to look at some trends across multiple campuses, Quantum can generate custom reports that will help you analyze that information.